Islam hijacked its believers. And the Muslim believers are practicing what Allah commands them to do. Allah is commanding them to behead all of us. That is the word of Allah. Why? Because we are infidels. Oh no, Brother Usama, you're wrong. You got this one wrong. Why is that? Because Christians and Jews are the people of the book. I guarantee you, if there's a Muslim man right now here, he will stand up next to me and he will tell you that Islam teaches that Christians and Jews and Muslims worship the same God and Christians and Jews are called the people of the book and no such a thing. These are for the infidels, not for us Christians. We believe in Jesus and we believe in Christianity. We believe in Moses and we believe in Judaism and Usama is teaching you hate. Let me ask a question. Anybody here tonight, by any chance, believe that Jesus Christ, Son of Virgin Mary, is God Almighty who came in flesh? Are you sure? Okay, put your hand down. Anybody here tonight, by any chance, believe uh, the God of Christianity is a triune, Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Are you sure? Listen to what Allah said in the Quran. In Quran chapter 5, verse 72, Allah said what? Infidels indeed are those who said, Surely Allah is the Christ, Son of Mary. That's you! You believe Jesus Christ, Son of Virgin Mary, is God, because Muslims believe Allah is God. And you are infidel indeed. Not maybe, 50-50, no, indeed, for sure. Other translations, they say, certainly. Or for certain. How about this next verse, 573? Infidels indeed are those who said, Surely Allah is the third of three. That's you. You believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit? You put your hand up, don't you? So what did Allah teach Muslims to do to you? 47.4, when you meet those who became infidel, strike the necks until you have made a great slaughter among them. Love it in this verse we just opened in the Quran today. This gentleman, who's his doctor, is giving the Quran to lead him to Islam. And I opened the Quran, chapter 5, verse 51, in the English translation, which was given by the Muslim doctor to the brother here tonight. And what did, in these two English translations he have, not mine, the other, they said exactly what is written here. Listen to what Allah said, 551, Quran, chapter 5, verse 51. Allah said what? O you who have believed, do not take the Jews and the Christians as friends. They are friends to one another. And whoever among you takes them as friends, so surely he is of them. Surely Allah does not guide the unjust people. And I love it when Muslims say, what? That's not the true translation. The word friends here is not really friends. It's the word allies. No, it's friends. And if it is ally, why in the world all your English translation put it for friends? Are they all stupid? And I tell you why Allah does not want to take, them, take us for friends. Because Allah is commands them in Quran chapter 9 verse 29 to kill us. Hey, you Christian, help me to kill them Christian. Does this work? Of course not. So I'm not going to take you to help me to kill the Christian. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be friends with you because I'm going to kill all of you. Says who? Says Allah in the Quran 929. Listen carefully. Engage in war with those who do not believe in Allah and in the last day. And do not forbid what Allah and his messenger forbid. And do not believe in the religion of the truth among those who have been given the book until they pay the tribute out of hand and they are subdued. And I love it when Muslims will say you, well, there is verses in the Quran teach to fight, but that's only for self-defense. Imagine with me, you are with your wife, with your kids, in your own home, minding your own self, mind your own business, and somebody come to attack you. Will, you. will you not protect your family? Will you not protect your city? Will you not protect your country? So Muhammad was commanded by Allah in the Quran to fight only those who fight him. How many of you heard this before? Listen to the verse of the Quran. Guys, first of all, there's not one verse in the Quran support this baloney interpretation. Listen to the verse. Engage in war with those who engage in war with you, Muhammad. No, 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 no. Those who do not believe in Allah. I don't believe in Allah. Allah is Satan. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. I do not forbid what Muhammad and Allah forbid. I like to eat pork. Bacon and sausage is my best breakfast. I do not believe in the wicked cult of Islam. That's why Muslims must kill me and you. 
There's, there's not one verse in the Quran. I dare one Muslim to give me one verse in the Quran where Allah said, fight if they only fight you. There are 350 verses in the Quran teach hate. 79 Allah said in the Quran for Muslims to engage in war. Not one of the 79 words he said, if they fight you. Terrorization of the West. Terrorization of the Christian and the Jew did not begin in September 11. But it was there when Muhammad wrote this filth and this hate in his book of the Quran 1430 some years ago. Listen to what Allah said in Quran chapter 33 verses 26 and 27. Here is 26. And he brought down the people of the book who backed them from their strong places and cast terror into their hearts. A group of them you are killing and a group of them you are taking captive. Who? The people of the book. The Jews and the Christian. What they did to them? They terrorized them. As a matter of fact, Allah is helping them. He is the one who casts the terror into the heart of the Jews and the Christian. Not just the Muslim. They're Allah, Satan himself. So they kill some and they take some as captive. What else? Here we go. Verse 27 have a very important message for us here in America. Because here's Muhammad is talking about you, your country, your land. Listen carefully. And he made you to inherit their land and their homes and their money and a land which you had never set foot on. And Allah was mighty over all things. How do you inherit somebody? He have to die first. So they're going to kill us to take over our land, our homes, and our money. And here's America. And a land which you had never set foot on. The United States of America. Every piece of land on earth. See, years ago, there was not any Muslim here. Years ago, there was not any Muslim out of Mecca or Saudi Arabia. And Muhammad is telling him, you're going to walk up to all the land, you're going to take over all the lands. After they terrorize us, after they kill our men, and after they take our women and children as slave and concubine. Yeah, I know. Allah love. Yes, indeed. I ask Muslim, can you show me a, a verse in the Quran where Allah loves somebody who does something good? No. But here's what Allah said in Quran chapter 61 verse 4. Allah love. Love who? Listen carefully. Surely Allah loves those who engage in war in ranks for his sake, as if they were a solid wall. Allah loves us Muhammad Atta. Allah loves us Osama bin Laden. Allah loves us Obama who helped Muslims to take over this country. Anyone who will do anything for the cause of Allah, for the good of Allah, for the good of Islam, Allah love. That's not what the Bible said. Listen to the word of God in the book of John. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 and 8. God said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. You see the difference between the writing of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, and the writing of Satan? Allah loves us who go and kill. No. Beloved, let us love one another. Don't you dare call yourself a Christian if you don't love the Muslims. Because they need your love more than ever. They need your love today better than any other day in the past. You know why? Because they are victims of Islam. And unless we love the Muslim and reach out to them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and show them the error and the counterfeit of the Quran and everything written in Islam, which is literally, it's just a counterfeit of Christianity. We need to love them, to reach out to them, to lead them to Christ. Amen. You will not... You will not win the battle with Muslims because they are in war with us. You will not win it with bullets. It will be won with knowledge. If the American Christian have reached out to the first Muslim family, came to this country and leads them to Christ, so is the second family, so is the third family, I guarantee you, not one Muslim country will send any Muslim to our land. But they're doing it because we do not do anything to reach out to them. And guess what? They're taking over our children. The pillars of Islam. I'm not going to get into it. You need to get this first DVD, Revealing the Truth About Islam. You can get the whole thing in details. But here's a fact. They have been teaching in our public school for the last 10 years or so, the five pillars of Islam. I'm sorry, they're not five. They're seven. They're missing two. 
And they started like evolution. 30 some years ago, when they did the evolution in America, what they did, they, they, they literally said that, well, let's draw a big picture of dinosaur and write a few words under it. And we call it the theory of evolution. Years go by, picture of dinosaur got smaller, and a few sentences become pages and pages, and then slowly, slowly change it to not theory, but the science of evolution. And now evolutionists marking the Bible, marking creation in our textbooks. So is Islam. We cover 65 programs of lies in the textbooks about what Muslims teach about Islam in our textbooks. And what, what I'm saying there is the big picture of dinosaur. And slowly, they are no longer teaching the pearls of Islam, but actually, they are practicing it. Can you imagine? And instead of they just say, Muslims say, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his prophet as the first pillar of Islam, they are actually making our children repeating after the teacher, the shahada, in our public schools. Instead of they just uh, talk about the five prayer as you have been, now they're taking our school bus from our school to some mosque in a school trip and they make our boys stand up with men in the front of the line and the girls sit in the back and our Christian boys praying towards Mecca, Allahu Akbar, with the grown-up men in the mosque. Can you imagine taking the same bus Falling with students from our public school to the nearest church and teach them about the pillars of Christianity? Why we allowed Muslims to teach the pillars of Islam in a social study books or in a geography books or in history books? That is religion. It should be stay within the religion. I would like to go in the same school and teach the pillars of Christianity. Zakat. In Muhammad days, they used to give 20% of the what? <laughs> spoil. What is a spoil? That's when daddy work hard all day, honey. And he go out with his uncle Muhammad, with everybody else, carrying his sword, killing some Christian men and some Christian, some Jewish men, and bring the women and the children and all the animals and all the goodies. And Muhammad get 20%. And today Muslims give 2.5% of their net, the net of their income. And guess what? You, American, give 2.5% every day in this country towards Muslim organizations. I'll prove it to you tonight. Just relax. Some of you say, oh, I will never give a dump to the Muslim. You have been giving to Muslim organization in this country under Sharia finance for the last 15 or so years in this country. Unless you only use cash. You don't have any insurance. You don't use any bank, then you are, you are not. Otherwise, you are giving towards Sharia finance. They fast the month of Ramadan, and they do the Hajj to Mecca, and all these wonderful things they do. And guess what? All these doctrine is not true. It's false doctrine. Why? Because it doesn't matter really. You cannot receive forgiveness of your sin by visiting Mecca. You can't. Because the Bible said, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You can go live in this black building all your life, and you die, and you're going to burn in hell forever with Muhammad. Not even a holy site. If you go to Jerusalem and you visit the holy site, it will not work. You must believe in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for your sin and he rose again. And that's how you can have forgiveness of your sins. That was amazing. Even if you practice the pillar number six, the pillar of da'wah, that is Muslimizing the West. Da'wah means invitation. They are right now in the stage number six where they are inviting you, they are inviting your children to become Muslim. Even if you do all these six pillars, if you die, all Muslims believe they will burn in hell. And then Allah will show his mercy to some of those who are in hell and he will remove them from hell to the paradise of Muhammad. Some. The only way you can guarantee it to make it to heaven is to perform pillar number seven. But let me talk to you a little bit about this one. Because see, we Christians talk about evangelism. And we are not doing evangelism. Because if we're doing evangelism, will not be anyone here in this country as a candidate to believe in Islam. Will not be a neighbor of us who are not a believers in Christ. This is your house, neighbor, your, the garage of your neighbor's house. 
And every day you go to the church on Sunday and Wednesday, whatever time, you see sometimes Mr. and Mrs. Smith standing in front of their homes. And you wave at them, good morning, and say good morning to you. Oh, say a